All right, everyone, welcome back to the Ohio Bobcats Coaches Show with Jeff Bowles. Coach, uh, another crazy week. You guys had three games in five days. Yesterday's game against uh, Kent State was canceled there. Just first question is, how's everyone feeling? Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's as good as can be. And I think if you look at the, the year that everyone's been going through, um, you know, there's zero fluidity to it. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. and and uh, But as it's, we always say, control what you can. And, uh, you know, that, that's what we're doing right now. One of those unknowns is whether you can be able to play on Friday against Bowling Green and then more importantly, play in the MAC tournament, which starts next Thursday. Where are you at with that or, or do you not know? Yeah, it's, it's still up in the air. I think, you know, for, for us, we, we had you know, one positive test and, and two kids quarantine or contact traced. And, you know, we, we ended up giving our guys off Sunday, even though we played Tuesday. I thought, you know, mentally and physically, you know, we needed a day off. Um, and if you look at the, the previous uh, pause that we had, you know, we were on a road trip in a hotel, on a plane, on a bus. So the contact tracing was a lot different then, you know, than it is now. And um, I think for us, you know, we're, we're, we tested today. Uh, we'll get our results back tomorrow. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're all negative. And, and then our expectations, you know, would be to play the game on Friday. And, and you know, I think the biggest goal is to make it to March 11th, you know, uh, you know, for everybody. School policy dictates that for those who were close contact with someone that was positive, they have to miss 10 days. So if they were close contact yesterday, Tuesday, they'll have to miss Tuesday through the 11th. The 11th is when the MAC tournament starts. How concerning is that for you to be able to have enough guys to play in that game in order to be able to play in what is the biggest stage for you guys this year? Yeah, you know, so there's a process like you've mentioned. And you know, what we do as a department and our trainer, we sit there and think, say, hey, here's who we think, you know, should be contact traced. And then that goes to campus. And then campus has case managers. And, you know, they go through everything with uh, the individual. And, you know, sometimes those case managers will say, well, we don't think, you know, you should be quarantined. So you'll need to do your 10 day quarantine. Um, you know, that happened last time, you know, when we all got shut down, um, you know, for a couple guys. So we're still in the process of figuring all that out. And obviously the biggest thing is the health and well-being of, you know, the individuals, um, you know, one who tested positive and make sure that th those guys are okay, constantly checking on them and seeing uh, how they're doing. And then, you know, let the university and, and, you know, all the people that are involved in the process, um, you know, the campus liaison, the case manager, uh, take care of everything else. And, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure, Justin, but sometimes it starts, you know, the day of the contact, the day of the symptoms, and I'm not smart enough to figure all that, you know, stuff out. So we're, we're still in the process of figuring those three out when they could come back. Uh, but, you know, when you're this close to the tournament, you know, you're going to have, you know, I think Holy Cross and their, their tournament had a tier one positive and they, they had to forfeit their first game and Loyola Maryland moved on. And I think you're going to see that probably a lot throughout the country. You know, this time of season, that this close to all the tournaments. How hard is that? Just knowing how much work has been put in all season to stay as safe as possible. And then after missing 20 games, you finally get back at it. You have three games in five days and then bam, another pause. How hard has this been for yourself and for the team when you're talking to them individually? Yeah, I mean, very, very unfortunate. And But we've always said from day one, like the, the virus, you, you, you can't hide from it, right? It's airborne, it's around, and you don't know where it is. And sometimes you don't know how you got it. And there's been a lot of cases like that, but we always talk about control what you can limit who you hang out with, you know, wash your hands, wear masks. We're talking about double masking our guys. And really these last couple of weeks, you know, just having the discipline, self-discipline maturity to kind of, you know, multiply that by a hundred, everything we've been doing. And our guys have done a phenomenal job. And, you know, sometimes you get it. And, and uh, you know, the last time it came in waves, cause you know, guys in the dorm guys doing studying and, and, um, you know, the, like I said, the contact trace with the plane and the bus and the hotel. I think that was a lot different last time than it is this time because we were at home. What are you controlling the best that you can? Yeah, I think, you know, number one attitude, you know, positivity with me is number one. And, and I think figuring out how the best way to mitigate the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's film sessions. Um, you know, we, we really haven't had a full team practice since February 1st. Um, you know, we played three games in five days. Prior to that, we had nine guys on that Sunday to practice. You know, had to use a GA. Um, didn't practice in between games because of the quick turnaround. 
And then Sunday we didn't practice because I thought they were mentally and physically zapped from everything. And that probably helped us from a contact trace standpoint that we didn't practice that day. And then you know, we, we got the positive antigen test on Monday and then you got to do a PCR test. So Monday, the only people we worked out were guys who had tested positive before. You know, we told everyone else to isolate, go home, you know, don't get, go out anywhere, you know, be around anybody. And then um, you know, Wednesday we did all individual stuff um, and we did our PCR test uh, today. We'll get the results back tomorrow. And if they're negative tomorrow, then we'll have our probably our first you know team practice where we can go five on five up and down you know a month and a half. Just for the casual fan, how important is it to have that team practice? What are you missing out on on not having that right now, especially at this time of the year where you're getting ready for a conference tournament? Yeah, I think the biggest thing from the pause, like the, the rust, the timing, the conditioning, mm-hmm. you know, and you know we we were really good. Um, you know, we didn't have a full roster uh, Tuesday against Akron. But our guys had great energy, you know, good juice. Uh, even Thursday we had it, and then Saturday against Buffalo, I thought we were zapped. You know, we just looked a step slow, and um, I think they had that many games in that short amount of time. You know, the biggest thing is the, just the conditioning uh, aspect of it, of being, you know, you know, playing games and practice, being able to go up and down and practice. It's, it's hard to simulate any type of game intensity, and you know, we try to do as much conditioning. Uh, as we could in the time leading up to those three games in five days. But even now this week, you know, we, we try to do some running and, you know, shooting drills where they run and get their heart rate up. But, you know, not practicing and going up and down five on five, you know, that's timing offensively, defensively, communication. You know, so there's a lot that goes into it. For that game against Buffalo, how much do you just say, you know, that's a one-off? We played so many games and so many days without playing at all and without practicing together. And how much can you say we can learn a little bit from that game? Where are you at with that? I think both. You know, I think you know, a lot of it was Buffalo. They were really good. Mm-hmm. And they had great energy. Um, I thought we got really good looks. Uh, we were just short on a lot of them. Uh, we missed a lot of layups in the paint that we've been making. So I think it was some of us and, and, and you know, some of them as well. And I remember watching uh, the Baylor-Kansas game that night. And right. you know, Baylor looked exactly like we did. A step slow. Shots were short. And um, you know, I think it just takes time to get back into the groove of things. And everybody in the country's, you know, been through, you know, something similar, uh, I'm sure, at some point. Going to that win against Eastern Michigan, you guys won by 19 in that game. Let's start with Ben Vanderplas getting 1,000 points. It's hard to do in a college career. Um, just take me through what he means. We talked about it in a game, what he does. But on a daily basis, as a leader, what does he do for the team in practice, in a game, outside of all of that? Yeah, I mean, as good a player as he is, he's a better person um, off the court. Just phenomenal family. Um, you know, graduated in three years. He's going to finish a master's degree this year. You know, play next year, got to get another master's degree. Had a 3.99 GPA and um, just awesome individual. Uh, he's everything that you want in a student athlete. Represents Ohio University the right way. Uh, who we want, you know, in, in our program. And I think if you look at that Eastern Michigan game, you know, we had 30 assists on 34 baskets you know, against the zone. And I think four of those 34 makes were offensive rebound putbacks. So you know, we assisted on 30 baskets made, which I think is a record uh, definitely for Ohio University. And uh, you know, when you play against the zone and move the basketball, you're going to get good looks, but you got to hit singles uh, instead of home runs against it. I was just going to ask you about that 30 assists. That's kind of every coach's dream when you ask them what their ideal offense looks like. It's everybody touching the ball before a basket gets made. And it's hard to do that. And, and sometimes you don't want to do that. You don't need to. But just for yourself watching that and seeing it all come together, despite not having team practices, what does that say about the guys? Yeah, I think it goes back to kind of who we are as a program, a selfless, unselfish, you know, share the basketball. You know, we, we lead the Mac and assist. Mm-hmm. And I think it says a lot about the guys on the team. They really don't care who gets it as long as, you know, somebody makes it. And, you know, it starts with Jason Preston. You know, he's averaging almost eight assists a game again this year, one of the tops in the country. And I think every, everybody feeds off, of, you know, kind of his unselfishness. Who has grown the most as a bench player that you saw at the beginning of the year, you saw the potential, and they're actually getting there and maybe going past it, someone that, you didn't expect to do that, or, or you were hoping had the uh, the capability of doing that, and you're seeing that come to fruition throughout the season. Yeah, I think you know different guys have stepped up. You know, Miles Brown stepped in. Um, you know, great defensive presence off the floor or off the bench. 
uh, great athleticism. And uh, Mark Sears, you know what he did, what he's done, uh, kind of going in and out of the lineup when Jason's been hurt, and, and uh, went through the COVID health protocols. Um, you know his growth and maturity has been outstanding the whole year. Colin Granger's gave us good minutes off the bench. You know, just recently Jalen White, you know, has come in and you know hadn't really played the whole year and comes in those three games and, and is really productive. And uh, so that was encouraging to see as well. Well, Coach, I uh, I think I speak for all the uh, Bobcat Nation out there when they say you hope you have the game on Friday and then even more importantly, playing the MAC tournament starting next Thursday. So uh, yeah, I appreciate best it, of luck, hope for uh, negative tests and uh, positive vibes. That's the thing. Stay positive, test negative, and uh, control what you can. So no doubt. appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate your time, Coach.